let's address uh, Tata Motors numbers they have come out as well margin has come largely in line with uh, what we were expecting here at ET now revenue has also come in line we're getting uh, the first set of numbers as of now and revenue looks largely in line uh, Pat is where we have seen a very big beat coming in that has surpassed our poll and the streets estimate as well we were expecting Pat to come anywhere anywhere around that 6200 mark and uh, Pat has managed to break uh, all of those levels and Pat has actually come in at 17,529 crore rupees. So that's a very big beat coming in on the profitability front. Revenue also at 1.19 lakh crore rupees. You were expecting 1.2 lakh crores, but it's right uh, around that um, around that number as well. It's a big beat, in fact, Sneh. Revenue, it's about 13% of change in revenue and EBITDA is about 32% change. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, GLR was, has been always a crucial part, uh, but then uh, more details will follow up. But then we do have some comments also coming in where, wherein management is very confident of delivering a strong performance in FY25 also. You have more comments? Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're also getting some commentary coming in uh, from the management, like you mentioned. Uh, P.B. Balaji, CFO, he has said that the India business is now debt-free and they're also on track to become the net automotive debt-free uh, on a consolidated basis in FI25. Positive outlook coming over there. But to make sense of these numbers now, we're being joined by Abhishek Gaushin. They're the Deputy Vice President of Research at Sher Khan by BNP Paribas. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on the show today, um, Abhishek. And help us make sense of these numbers. The first uh, look of these numbers right off the bat everything in in line um, revenue you have uh, margins EBITDA all these three indices in line but very big beat coming on mm -hmm. the profitability front what's your take what's your first cut of these numbers okay so prima facie the operating performance of the company is almost in line with their estimates not on the con on the console basis but on the individual company basis also JLR has reported a 15.3 percent margin and the street was expecting the similar kind of a number and same is the case with the CV and the PV segment the beat in the profit which is seen in the uh, in the reported number is largely due to the uh, extra ordinary item and one of the items is that deferred tax asset uh, uh, of rupees uh, eight uh, eight point three thousand crore. So adjusting to that, uh, the numbers, uh, the bottom line will again come uh, in line or slightly better than that of the estimate. But largely, we focus on the operating performance that is in line. Beyond that, uh, there are two three things which uh, uh, are also we need to highlight here is that the company has paid a dividend of rupees three compared to a dividend of rupees two, given that uh, uh, last. Year it has again started paying dividends. It's the second consecutive year when it has paid um, uh, dividends. Second, the net automotive debt has uh, almost come down to 16,000 crore. If you remember that the net automotive debt in Q1 FY23 was roughly 16,000. Uh, 60,000 crore. So from in last six, seven quarters, the net automotive debt has uh, come down uh, strongly. So the excellence which it has been building up in its operating performance, that has been reflecting in the uh, in the uh, correction in the net automotive debt and the uh, uh, dividend payment. So on in in considering that, uh, uh, there's a, uh, the performance looks uh, in line with our estimates. Abhishek, uh, the way you mentioned that, of course, debt reduction, and that's one big elephant for, has been a one big elephant for Tata Motors also. But then how do you see the JLR profitability also? Because it looks like operation prof profitability is quite similar to what we had in FY24. Any crucial details there? Uh, for FY24, that I need to check, but the margin numbers, which is in front of me, saying that uh, it has been uh, uh, consisting, consistently uh, delivering EBITDA margin above 14% for last five, six quarters. So that momentum has been maintained. So uh, I don't think there is anything negative as per se that uh, what the uh, uh, reported numbers are in front of me. All right, Abhishek, while we're talking about uh, sectoral uh profitability and sectoral um, earnings coming in for Tata Motors also take us through the PV and the CV uh, numbers. What are you seeing on that front? And first look, it's seeming pretty good to me, but what's your takeaway? Uh, see, broadly, uh, we were expecting roughly 11.8% kind of a margin in the CV business and uh, the reported number is uh, uh, coming out to be in the similar range. And for the PV, we were expecting around 7.5% uh, kind of a number and uh, it is again 7.3%. So on that side, things are okay. But the thing is that now going forward, we may see some kind of a, a moderation in the demand in the H1 FY25 uh, in the domestic market. 
and uh, and most probably it is a consensus that uh, h2 fy25 would be better than or um, than h1 uh, 25 in jlr case uh, uh, obviously the order book is uh, uh, coming down from i think 148000 to now it come down to 133000 but that is also obvious given that uh, production has been improving for fy24 the company has delivered uh, whatever it has been promised at the beginning of the year uh, now we need to see that what uh, management uh, uh, what management give us guidance for uh, fy25 all right, Abhishek, thanks so much for joining us and sharing your first take on Tata Motors numbers. Overall, a good set of numbers coming in, largely in line, but uh, Pat has uh, beat estimates. But If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.